in a number of, uh, of overseas uh, platforms where we've spoken about South Africa, about the potential of South Africa. And globally, investors are very positive of South Africa. They see the great potentials of South Africa. A number of uh, foreign countries look at South Africa as the gateway to the African continent. So if we take a country like, for instance, uh, India, Turkey, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, even the Middle East, they all look to South Africa as being the gateway, the key to this African continent because of our infrastructure, our robust financial networks, the fact that our, our banking system is the best in the world. We've been voted the number one banking infrastructure and transparency in the world for three years in a row. Uh, we have the most innovative bank in the world based here in South Africa, Capitec Bank, which is a startup on its own. So foreigners are viewing South Africa as being this great potential and this great opportunity. The only drawback to all of this is the kind of policies that we have implemented in South Africa. So it's not the, it's not the potential of our economy, but the, 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 the drawback of our policy that is holding us from, from, from attracting a great deal of investment into our country. So why do you think we have such high unemployment, especially amongst the youth of our do you have about uh, two hours to discuss this? <laughs> Give me in 30 seconds. <laughs> in 30 seconds, I think that we haven't uh, really talked about or government really hasn't uh, understood where this unemployment is coming from. So we have some, some fantastic policies when it comes to entrepreneurship, addressing youth unemployment, uh, creating opportunities, but the implementation part of it is 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 not very good at all. That's the, 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 the fallback of, of all the policy. But the problem is, that we are talking about a modern day problem with an age old solution. So what we want to do is we want to, and this is where I, I, I want to reform education, is that we, we talk about sending people to go to university to become accountants and lawyers. When in the US, for instance, the top 10 firms, the top 10 law firms have shed 70% of their jobs purely because technology has taken over those job functions. So we are actually training people to become redundant in the future. We need to start changing the way we, we anticipate what employment should be. Should it be that we are creating employment opportunities for people to become officials and bureaucrats? Or should it be that we should be creating opportunities for youth to become drone pilots, to become uh, um, farmers to become involved in the agricultural sector, to become involved in high tech, to become involved as uh, coders. Who knew that uh, three years ago, if you told someone, I'm going to pursue a career as a gaming coder, they would have laughed at you and said, you're a nerd that's staying in your mother's basement, right? That was the image that we had. Today, gaming coders are multimillionaires. In fact, those who hack and move on to the right side as opposed to staying on the dark side. Yep. You know, those hackers are employed by government of agencies course. and security uh, companies all over the world uh, you know, to put up these uh, big firewalls. A very good point you're making, uh, Ibrahim.